I'm really in love with the typography and words. So even though I'm drawing them, I'm still I'm still kind of in a way still note taking, but I'm I'm turning the, the, the words into artwork. And I've done them for so long as a designer, I've drawn words for mock-ups like forever. So I've built up this ability to do them really quickly. So it's just a matter of practicing and that's just the way I see it. You know, that's what comes in my head, so I, I capture it. So I'm coming to realize that I tend to focus on typography. And then I'll mix in other bits. So the, really the core of it for me is typography, and then there's pictures. But yeah, I think by forcing yourself to listen to this, because you've got to process everything and then simplify it, it really does help with my retention a lot. So I started with... Uh, with his head and his name, which I just finished at the end, because he started diving in right away. So some of the things I started picking up on, 816 Valencia, so I captured that right away. He talked about being dazed and confused, so I captured that idea. Dazed in Brooklyn. Um, and then the struggles that he was having. Um, underfunded schools and students who have uh, learning disabilities, and then talking about the idea of cloning the teachers. So here I've got like a little drawing of clone teachers. Um, and then this connection that he had friends in writing, how could he connect these people with these students that needed help? So I started capturing these ideas, this idea of kids flowing into this building that they had, had, had found, showing a, a tutor with a student. This idea of uh, the shape of a hull of a ship, I had this image of a hull of a ship, so I captured that. And then the pirate supply was pretty interesting, so I took some space for that. I really like that idea of the mops uh, dropping on people's heads. So, you know, McSweeney, he kept mentioning, um, free tutoring sign and the trust gap. Uh, so you'll just see as I go through, I'm capturing whatever was floating in my head that was all mixed up. Because the way he was speaking was not really structured, it was really like popcorn, so I just started capturing. Like when I realized that, I just switch into popcorn mode and just capture stuff. Because it, to try and make sense out of it just doesn't make any sense. Um, they talk, uh, this idea that there was a transformative uh, effect when kids and adults work together, that idea. And so I wanted to show uh, kids and adults sitting at the same table. We talked about kids working on stuff next to adults who are doing work. Um, and then just moving down how they moved into the schools. So this progression of, you know, what, what can we do before 2.30? Moving into the schools. And then the book, Waiting to be Heard. And how that, uh, by having kids like writing to the level of publishing that sort of got them to a point where they didn't want to go back again. And then uh, sort of diving into the superhero store in Brooklyn. I, he kept mentioning Sam Potts and I was really curious about him so I wanted to capture his name and find out his work. Um, and then school but not school was his phrase that he said. Uh, same thing about, I, lo I love that idea of being addicted to getting your homework done early. So I captured that and then uh, his Ted wish that uh, a thousand partnerships would happen between creatives in the public schools. So that was pretty much it. So it's like, what, four pages? So you can see it's pretty compressed. I don't know how long you talked. I, I thought TED Talks were limited. You kept on talking. I was like, man, it just felt like forever. So uh, so now you kind of get a sense for, you know, how the, I'm not, I'm not capturing every detail. There's tons of stuff that I didn't capture. I'm just focusing on things that mean something to me. I think that's really important to understand that you, you can't like, like whenever I get to the place where I'm trying to capture something for somebody else later, then I feel like I'm working. Yeah. If I'm capturing something that's important to me, that means something to me, then that I can relate and resonate with that and put it down in a more uh, effective way. So it's really all about me filtering it. And then if you get 10 people in the room doing it, there's going to be 10 different filters on what was said, you know, emphasis on other things based on who you are. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the approach.